what is validation? Well, again, I'm going to take a very practical view, and I've been involved in this for over 45 years. And I've come to the conclusion that validation is the establishment of one or more performance characteristics for a test method. That is, does the method actually work? And this can be done by a single lab validation or by a multi-lab collaborative study. But the key is that if you want to know if it's working, where it's where available, you always compare it to a reference method so you know what the outcome is expected to be. And that's a key characteristic of validation, comparison to a reference method. And I'll come back to that uh, uh, during the course of this webinar. But that's an important consideration. But the basic parameter, the basic consideration is, does the method actually work? And when we talk about work, what are we talking about? We're talking about performance characteristics. Well, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, there are a number of performance characteristics that are applicable to microbiological methods, but many of these are also applicable to chemistry methods. First of all, we talk about relative accuracy or percent recovery. How much was there and how much did we get out? Then we talk about precision. And precision is expressed in terms of repeatability and reproducibility. And this applies specifically to quantitative methods, when you're actually counting something. Specificity is the selectivity of the method for the target analyte. Sensitivity is the ability of the method to distinguish the target analyte from non-targets. In microbiology, it's very important to look at inclusivity. That is the range of target analytes detected by methods. For example, there are 2,500 different salmonella serotypes. How do we know that the method is going to be inclusive for those 2,500? I'm not saying to test 2,500, but there are certain operational parameters to be used in looking at performance characteristics for inclusivity. Exclusivity, of course, is the range of non-targets excluded that are not detected by the method. The ability of the method to distinguish a positive outcome from a negative outcome, or a positive target from a, non from a negative target. And then, of course, we have false positive and false negative rates, which is primarily applicable to qualitative methods. And now we're seeing the term not so much false positive and false negative, but we're seeing the term positive and negative deviation. And the reason for this is I say when we are comparing it to a reference method, reference methods are traditionally cultural methods, certainly in microbiology. And a lot of the new methods that are coming along now are more uh, PCR-based or genetic-based methods, which have a tendency to be much more sensitive. But by the same token, sometimes you can get a false positive reaction. But you can also get positive reactions by these newer methods that are not detected culturally. And so although the outcome by the new method is positive, compared to the reference method, it is not. It's not truly a negative. And so we call them positive and negative deviations, that is, differences from the reference method. For, quanti for uh, quantitative methods, we also, or for, and for qualitative methods, the limited detection. And usually that is related to finding a, a, a single analyte or target analyte in a certain weight of product. Maybe it's 25 grams, maybe it's 10 grams, maybe it's 375 grams. So that's the limit of detection. Limit of quantitation is not so much applicable in microbiology because oftentimes the qualitative the quantitative determination is based upon the statistically accurate number of colony forming units you can count on a plate. It might be more applicable in chemistry where you're looking at uh, a linear response to a detectable target. And at some point, that linear response will fall off. This can also be applicable to some of the newer quantitative met qualitative methods in uh, microbiology where again, you're looking at a linear response. 
But one of the most important things also to consider is the scope of application or the, the matrices to which that method is being applied. So these are the essential performance characteristics that one would be considering or that one needs to consider. But there are three different kinds of microbiological methods. There are methods of identification, quantitative methods where you're actually counting, and qualitative methods where you're simply detecting, so-called presence-absence methods. And as you can see from this chart, not all performance characteristics are applicable to each of these methods, each of these basic uh, procedures. Identification methods, for example, only require sensitivity, specificity, inclusivity, and actually not even exclusivity, although it says that. But exclusivity could be the fact is there because if you have a, a method of identification that identifies gram-negative organisms, you want to make sure that it doesn't include, that it excludes gram-positive organisms and vice versa. So those are the four parameters, performance characteristics, that one would apply to a method of identification. For quantitative methods, you're actually doing enumeration. You can see that you're looking at relative accuracy, matrix effects, that is the effects of the different food categories or products, the precision of the method in terms of uh, repeatability and reproducibility, not so much sensitivity and specificity, but certainly inclusivity and exclusivity. And we're looking at false positive and false negative rates as well. So although sensitivity and specificity I haven't included in quantitative methods, we are looking at false positive and false positive rates when, in fact, the targets themselves are not being detected properly. The limit of detection, yes, and the limit of quantitation, yes, are applicable. But if we're talking about a qualitative method, you can see that matrix effects are still there. Accuracy is no longer the term relative accuracy, and I use the term relative accuracy, which refers, which refers to the recovery of a level, a certain level of organisms. And we know in microbiology, we know that we never have an absolute answer. We we always. Uh, qualify a response or a result by calling it a colony forming unit because we recognize that microorganisms tend to clump and don't always come out in a, that a, a colony is not necessarily formed by a single cell but could be formed by a clump of cells and a lot of the recovery is reflective of how well the sample's been prepared. So I call it relative accuracy. In qualitative methods that doesn't apply. Matrix effects, yes, that is the, the nature of the product you're testing. The precision of the method, no, because there is no repeatability and reproducibility in qualitative methods. But there is sensitivity, specificity, there is inclusivity and exclusivity, false and negative positive rates, and limited detection because, again, that's based upon the sample size that you're looking at, the analytical sample size, and obviously not a limit of quantitation. So you can see that depending upon the method, the, na the nature of the method, there are different parameters, performance characteristics that apply. Well, 17025 says that methods requiring validation are any newly developed methods. That includes in-house developed methods. So if you're starting a method from scratch, you have to validate the performance of that method and look at those characteristics that we talked about earlier. If you modify an official method in any way, you have to validate that change. Now here, and I don't want to get too confusing, but now the concept of validation becomes a little more restrictive because it doesn't say that you have to validate every single performance characteristic. What you have to look at is the essential ones that could be impacted by the change you're making in the modification. Similarly, if you're extending a method to a component or analyte or a matrix you will not previously test or included in the validation study, you have to look at whether or not the method will perform equally 
within that with that new matrix. And so you have to look at the at certain characteristics, certain performance parameters that could be impacted by that. Not all of them, but some that you feel might have uh, some particular uh, key characteristic. For example, if it's a quantitative method, you look at recovery, relative recovery. If it's a qualitative method, you look at sensitivity and specificity. And then, of course, if there are any changes involving new technology or automation, those have to be validated. So 17025 right now does have some requirements, but it's, they're not really clearly spelled out. 